the sea. Vast. Inscrutable. Requires an eagle eye. A constant gaze. On all that pass. For India, from time immemorial, the sea has afforded opportunities and challenges that altered history. Change has always come from the sea, generation after generation. The sea is where it starts. A benevolent eye A piercing gaze. The Indian Navy is tasked with both. Defending India's sovereignty. Uncovering threats. Aiding partners. Securing the world's busiest trade routes. Every duty performed in the service of the nation. We are the Indian Navy. Combat ready, credible and cohesive. Exactly 49 years ago, we had an opportunity to serve our nation as a force at sea. Nineteen seventy one. Millions were forced to flee from East Pakistan. With no political resolution in sight, conflict became inevitable. The Navy was tasked with delivering the hammer blow from the sea, with strikes aimed at decisive outcomes, destruction of all Pakistani assets at sea and on land, control of the sea in defense of the homeland, total blockade of movements from ports in both East and West Pakistan. The 1971 war was a watershed moment in the history of the Indian Navy. Admiral S.M. Nanda, the then Chief of the Naval Staff, was very clear that the Indian Navy must adopt an aggressive posture. The Indian Navy's contributions were instrumental in India gaining decisive victory in the war and towards the creation of a new friendly neighbor. The night of 4th December 1971, it began with a daring unprecedented strike by missile boats on Karachi, inflicting extensive damage to Karachi harbour and shipping. Since then, we celebrate the momentous day of 4th December as Indian Navy Day. A second missile attack on Karachi harbour achieved further destruction of the enemy and maritime dominance for the Navy. On the Eastern Front, in the Bay of Bengal, aircraft carrier Vikrant was a force multiplier for the Eastern Fleet. From airstrikes to the blockade, Vikrant's impact was forceful through the length of the conflict, as strikes by Seahawks prevented East Pakistani forces from using the seas. The enemy dispatched PNS Ghazi to nullify the advantage Vikrant afforded. However, the preemptive actions of INS Rajput gave Ghazi a watery burial near Vishakhapatnam. While action progressed at sea, the Navy also mounted 
special operations at Chalna Khulna harbors. INS Panvel and the two gunboats Padma and Palash, manned by the Mukti Bahini, entered and inflicted heavy damage on these harbors in the face of stiff resistance. Towards the end of the war, the likelihood of the enemy attempting escape into Burma, now Myanmar, became a distinct possibility. To prevent this, the Indian Navy executed an amphibious landing for the first time in the history of India. As we celebrate our victories, we also pay homage to the brave martyrs of INS Khukri, who made the supreme sacrifice in discharging their duty in the late hours of 9th December. We owe a debt of gratitude to martyrs and veterans of the 1971 war. So this year, we begin the Golden Jubilee celebrations of our victory and the Navy's decisive role in the conquest of a foe and the creation of a friendly neighbor. Even today, service to the nation and readiness in the face of newly emergent challenges, traditional and non-traditional defines the Navy. As tensions simmered along the northern borders, the Navy also increased its operational readiness and preemptive deployment. This is one of the sorties where we are operating near the LAC. The Pieta has been in the forefront of operations as far as uh, building up our MD is concerned. We have our uh, footprint all the way from Malacca, Sunda to Lombok in the east, all the way till Seychelles, Gulf of Aden and the Persian Gulf at the west. We are getting many tri-service operations coordinating with Indian Air Force and Indian Army. When COVID-19 appeared as a threat to all humanity, the world started looking inwards. But the Indian Navy stepped out, putting its shoulder firmly to the wheel in support of national efforts. We created 24 by 7 telemedicine facilities, mobile dispensaries, mobile blood collection centers, state-of-the-art labs for testing facilities, and also COVID management centers across all naval hospitals, across all commands. We were able to save a lot of lives, prevent a lot of infections, and also keep our sea warriors combat ready without affecting operational readiness. Operation Samudra Setu and Mission Saga represent important examples of how the Navy supported India's efforts, proving the adage, the seas connect they don't divide. Though very noble, the task had its own challenges. We had to adopt extreme measures to keep everybody safe, comfortable and most importantly to prevent any case of COVID on board. Launched on 5th May 2020, Operation Samudra Setu or Sea Bridge was part of Mission Vande Bharat. The wider national effort to repatriate Indian citizens. Over 55 days, covering 23,000 kilometers, it was the largest such repatriation by the Indian Navy till date. The Navy remained committed to partners in the Indian Ocean region with neighborhood first as the key mantra. The Prime Minister's vision of Sagar, security and growth for all in the region was consolidated during COVID. Naval aircraft flew multiple sorties, ferrying equipment, medical personnel and medicine across the country. There were many of the doctors and many of the nurses and many of the paramedical personnel who were themselves as a part of this war afflicted by COVID-19. They had to be hospitalized, they fought the illness, recovered and come back to join the battle again. We are indeed proud of our healthcare workers. 
the Navy tackled the unprecedented and extraordinary challenge. Special protocols were swiftly deployed to prevent COVID-19 spread on Navy ships, ensuring that caregivers would not be care seekers. Sickbay complex has two isolation wards, that is one and two. Therefore, say, uh, patients can be isolated in these wards. The circulation, the speciality about these wards is that the circulation is enclosed. Uh, the air is directly sucked from the atmosphere and then it is uh, exhaust is directly to, to the outside so that the circulation inside does not get mixed with the, uh, the ventilation which is for the remaining of the ship. All naval personnel walk the extra mile during these difficult times. Coming together with a sense of commitment and courage. Converting adversity into opportunity through innovation and ingenuity. Despite the pandemic, our combat ready ships were fully deployed protecting India's interests, allowing the Navy to forge and maintain partnerships with global maritime powers. Our operational readiness keeps the oceans peaceful and supports a free and open maritime space for regional prosperity. The 24th edition of Malabar Naval Exercise off the Indian shores. A showcase of synergy and coordination between friendly navies. It is based on shared values and commitment to an open, inclusive Indo-Pacific and a rules-based international order. The two extremely powerful aircraft carrier groups operating in tandem. This edition of the exercise saw interaction of various kinds, ranging from complex air-to-air maneuvers between the jets that operated from the deck of Vikramaditya and those that operated from U.S.'s limits. We fight at the train in which we interact with the modern navies, with the air arm, and we revise our procedures, revisit our SOPs, and finally we can very proudly say that we are completely interoperable. We also been involved in advanced coordinated anti-submarine exercises, underway replenishment, anti-air firing, and a lot of surface firing exercises. Since we have been exercising with these navies for some time, there is a good sense of comfort level and high degree of interoperability. As we spend more time at sea doing advanced level of exercises, a level operating together for a common goal will only get better in the years to come. Indian and Japanese naval forces conducted exercises near the Malacca Straits. Indian Navy exercised and operated with navies of Bangladesh, Indonesia, Myanmar, Oman, Russia, Singapore, Sri Lanka and Thailand. When merchant ship New Diamond carrying 270,000 tons of oil caught fire off the eastern coast of Sri Lanka, Indian Navy responded to help douse the flames. The Indian Navy has emerged as the preferred security partner for the region. Indigenous shipbuilding activities continued despite COVID, making India self-reliant, while ploughing investment back into the Indian economy. INLCU L57 was commissioned into the Indian Navy at Port Blair, an amphibious vessel tasked with transporting and deploying troops and equipment from ship to shore. INS Kavaratti, the last of the four indigenously built anti-submarine warfare stealth corvettes, was commissioned as a combat-ready platform. Vagir launched. Indigenously made, it is the fifth among the six Kalvari-class submarines. India's first indigenous aircraft carrier went through basin trials and will soon be ready for sea trials. Design and construction of aircraft carriers because of their scale, complexities and legacy experience is immensely challenging. The maiden attempt of Indian Navy to indigenously design and build an aircraft carrier therefore assumes special significance. With more than 78% of the equipment and material being sourced from indigenous suppliers, 
ISE is a true reflection of Prime Minister's vision of Atmanirbhar Bharat. ISE has completed trials of equipment and systems in harbour and is now being readied for sea trials. Ships delivery being targeted by end 2021 will take India into elite group of nations having niche capabilities of design and construction of an aircraft carrier. Naval Innovation and Indigenization Organization is a step towards the goal of Atman Nirbhar Bharat. New India, a trusted regional power, an aspiring economic powerhouse, can no longer neglect the sea. The Indian Navy builds trust and bridges with our maritime neighbors in the Indian Ocean region. while maintaining a keen gaze on matters affecting India's national security. Going forward, India must be a friend with friends and a merciless foe to our enemies. We must never forget that for India, the sea is where it starts. Therefore, the Indian Navy will forever be combat ready, credible and cohesive.